Hello, welcome to another Cleve Tech Tech Tip. Hopefully you've been watching all my tech tips for quite a while, but if you haven't, we're now in number 50 something of our tech tips, um, well over a year's worth of tech tips to look back on. Um, if you haven't seen this particular series of tech tips, I'll put a link up here now for my rebuilding of my slot stocks car or, or a customer's slot stocks car. And in the last episode, I sent the armature off to be redone by Dave Harvey. Um, he rebalanced it and it's come back. So now it's time to reassemble the motor. So enjoy what's coming next. So if you'd watched the previous episode on my motor building when I took it all apart, you'll remember that the magnets in the can aren't actually glued in and they're not going to settle in the right or stay in the right position reliably uh, during a race, etc. So I'm going to need to glue them in. Now that's probably what you saw on the block at the start of this video. I'm going to be using this two-part uh, epoxy glue. This one's Araldite Rapid. I'm going to use the rapid stuff because um, I just want to hold the magnets in uh, reasonably well. I don't want them, they don't necessarily need to be held in with really expensive epoxy because there's not going to be a lot of heat applied to the can of the motor. So the epoxy has not got to withstand loads of heat when I'm soldering the motor in and out many times. But I do need a bit of an epoxy to fill up any gaps around the magnet and hold them in place. You could as a really last resort, run some super glue behind the magnets and push it together. Um, that does work and I have done that in emergencies on occasions, but mixing together some epoxy like that is probably the best way to hold the magnets in place slightly more permanently. Now, this stuff here, I'll put a link in the video description of where you can get it from. Um, this stuff's not too expensive, uh, readily available on Amazon. Now, before I glue the magnets into the can, I need to make sure that the can's all cleaned up inside and notice I've also roughened up the inside of the can slightly because then it allows the glue to stick better to the can and to roughen it up I've just used one of these little sanding drums on my Proxon. Uh, great tool again I'll put links in the video description of where you can get a Proxon tool from where you can get these little sanding drums from. Uh, they're really good for all sorts of jobs. I've had my Proxon quite a few years now uh, never let me down. It's a brilliant tool. I'm going to roughen up the inside of the can, as I say, to make sure that the glue sticks better. There we go. I've also just roughened up the back of the magnet a little bit, put a few little nicks in the back of the magnet here with a little cutting disc on a Dremel, just again to give more purchase for the glue to hold on the back of the magnet. You don't want to cut too much into the back of the magnet because you don't want to remove magnetic material, you don't want to weaken the magnet so it cracks and breaks, but just a few little nicks in the back of the magnet will help the glue to attach itself to the back of the magnet as well. I've made sure everything is cleaned up, so I've cleaned up the inside of the can with my little blue tack trick, and I've also used some acetone to clean inside the can as well to make sure there's no grease inside there because that will obviously stop the glue from sticking. Again I'll put a link to some acetone down on the uh, in the video description. I've also cleaned the back of the magnets up with acetone as well. Clean the clips up so I've cleaned everything up. I've also cleaned my hands the best I can. They don't look great in the video but they are much cleaner than they were. It's also worth remembering which way the magnets went into the can because if you put them in the wrong way the motor will either turn the wrong way or you'll get the magnetic field wrong and it won't match what it was before. You may need to re-zap the motor. I don't want to do any of that. Um, I just want to put it back uh, as it was before, but obviously in a lot better condition and running a lot better than it did before. So I've noted which way round the magnets were in the can before, so hopefully the rotation and everything will be the same. Another reason why I want to use this Aerodyne Rapid is because it doesn't really need a lot of heat to cure. It cures quite fast. Um, if I was using something perhaps a little bit more permanent, then I may need to put the whole setup in the oven to cure it all uh, over a period of time. That can hurt the magnets as well and they would probably need re-zapping after I'd glued them in. 
Uh, I don't really want to do any of the re-zapping. I don't have a zapper handy here at the moment. So I just need to glue them in without damaging their magnetic properties too much. So I have my trusty mixing stick. You might have seen this in previous videos. So I'm going to mix it together. You use equal amounts of each and then you mix them both together till they go a nice even colour. Now, just in case you didn't know, when you remove the cap off of a new tube like that and it's got a sealed end, caps often have a little piercing part in the other end. You can just push on like that and that pierces the end of the tube and it's ready to go. Now, when I've mixed this, I'm gonna to have to be fairly quick because again, it can set in five minutes. So I need to be relatively quick. So I'll try and film this all in one go. So we need to use equal amounts of each. Obviously, the more you mix up, the easier it is to tell you've used equal amounts but I just try and put them side by side on the mixing board, just a bit of cardboard like that to try and get fairly even amounts of each. Then I can start mixing them together. It's worth making sure they are nice thoroughly mixed so you get a nice glue joint at the end. So I get them thoroughly mixed. I even make sure I wipe it off the end like that to make sure that I'm mixing everything, even the stuff that's stuck to the mixer. Give it a good mixing like this. Well, I'm happy that it's nice and mixed. I'm gonna take my stick and put some inside the can like that. Make sure I'm putting it where the magnet's going to go all over the inside of the can like that I'm also going to put some on the back of the magnet like this put the magnet in the can slide it in like that you can take a little bit of paper and wipe off the end of the can because I don't want any glue around there. Let's get the clips in place. I think the clips tend to hold themselves more or less in place, but they're going to help when I slide the next magnet in so that the next magnet doesn't jump onto the magnet I've already put in. So put the clips there. Like that and then hopefully I can push the magnet into place push the magnet into place wipe off any excess glue just around the outside and off my fingers because I don't want to get that over everything at the moment like that I'm then just going to push the magnets back slightly because I know what position they need to be in. So push them back slightly like that. Oops, there we go. Push them. That one's starting to stick. Push it back slightly like that. And then I know they need to be in the right position when the end bell's pushed on. So I'm going to push the end bell on and that's going to position the magnets where I want them nice and evenly in the can. Now, if you want to make sure there's always, there's plenty of glue in there, then you can always drop a little bit more near the top there. And I'll put a little bit more there like that. And again, on the other side, put a little bit of, put a little blob of glue there. A little bit more on the bottom there. Now you're thinking, is that gonna get in the way of the end bell? Well, yes, it will at the moment, but I'm going to take a hairdryer on its lowest uh, air setting. And I'm just gonna heat it up slightly. And by heating up the glue, it will run nicely 
down inside those joints and it won't overheat the can either. It just basically makes sure the glue runs nicely and sits nicely down those magnets and fills up all the gaps just by giving it a little bit of warmth. So I'll get that to flow nicely and that will cure it without overheating the magnet. So here we have it, magnets glued in. Sometimes you might get a little bit of glue, excess glue around the edge of the magnet, but it's quite easy to just scrape it off with a knife, especially before it's fully hardened. Again, you might end up with some excess glue around these ends of the magnets here, but you can see how the glue's gone nicely in and flowed right down top and bottom of the magnets as well and around the back of the magnets. So those should be held in nicely now and not move in a big accident. So now the magnets are glued in, it's time to install a new bushing into the end of the can. And that's where we've got to leave it for today. So come back for the next tech tip where we'll finish soldering this bushing into the can and we'll move on with other parts of the motor rebuild. Thank you for watching. Please remember to hit the little like button down below and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll be back very soon with some more tech tips. Bye for now.